Hello and welcome back to the Ghost Droid development series. In today's video we'll be going over the three most important H's of game development. Hitboxes, hurtboxes and health. Understanding how hitboxes and hurtboxes function is a key, well is the key to understanding how we can apply damage to our entities in various ways. It also means you know we'll be able to keep track of their health and just do some really cool things. So to kind of start this off I think what would be a really good idea is for us to just actually design something that handles health first right we want to know like we want to have that thing to modify before we start adding things to modify it so to create a health handler is what we're going to call it we're going to create a new scene it's going to be of other node and we're going to just make this of type node so just base node the reason why i'm using base node here is because it has no physics requirement or physics process function or anything along those lines it's just a you know, it doesn't contain any space or anything like that. It's just a simple, simple node. And we don't need it to be anything else other than, in some ways, a data container. So we're going to rename this. We're going to rename this to Health Handler. Hit Control S or Command S and save. We're going to go into Scenes, Handlers, and save it under the handlers here. Now we're going to go and give it a script. So I'm going to remove the Ready and Process function for now. And we are going to give this a class underscore name of health handler. So now we get to sit here and think about what health handlers or what what we actually need, you know, behind the scenes to handle health, right? Of course, we're going to need the health value. So let's go and make a var for the current underscore health as uh, of type int and set that equal to, let's go zero for now. So we have our current health. Well, the other thing we're going to want to make sure that we have is a max health value and the max health value is what everything will start with right so it's what their starting health will be uh, we're going to do an exported variable for this one it's going to be export var max underscore health be off type in and we'll just preset that to 10 for now so we have our health and we have our current health we are now going to want some way of accessing these values without actually getting into the script and or like you know actually trying to modify the specific variables uh how do we want to do that well we will do what we've done in previous videos where we create getter and setter functions so let's create one for getting the health first let's go funk get underscore we'll do get current health because we're going to want to know what the current health of the entity is so because we're going to want to use this as a getter, we're going to need a return function, which means this is going to want to return the type of int or integer. Then we just write return current health. And I just realized I just named that to get current. So we want to make that get current health. There we go. So there's our getter function for getting the current health. Uh, now let's do set current health, right? We're going to want to use a function to set the current health to something. So func set underscore current underscore health uh, this won't have any return type so we can do void but it will need parameters it's going to need a intake parameter so we're going to need a new health value so new underscore health of type int and what are we going to want to do here well we're going to want to set the current health equal to the new health so that's setting the current health up for us now new question is why do we have a max health function and how are we going to be setting our current health to the max health well this is actually where the ready function is going to come in so uh, at the very top here let's go and create a func for underscore ready and then we will call that new function we just created for set current health we will pass in the max health that way on ready anything that has a health handler will automatically set its health to whatever we've set the max health to now in the future we'll have many ways of controlling the max health we'll do it through resources through exporting in the editor like so uh, and a few other different modifiers and things like that depending on like the game difficulty or how high the score is just to make the game a little bit harder for the player so we have our set get or setter and getter functions created uh, what else do we want the health to kind of do well health is something that will need to go up or down depending on if it's you know applied damage or applied healing so let's go and make some apply healing apply damage functions let's go func apply underscore damage this will take a parameter 
of damage underscore value. So we know what, you know, uh, when we actually come and look at this, we know, okay, this needs to take damage value. So it needs to take a damage. Uh, this will be of type integer with a void return type. And all we do here is grab the current health and we go minus equals damage value. So we're now applying the damage. Uh, what about applying health like or adding health or like applying healing of some sort? Well, it's technically just the opposite of taking damage, right? You are increasing your health instead of going like removing health. So you can do another function here for apply underscore healing. This will be uh, healing underscore value of type int void return type. And all we do is the current health plus equals the healing value. So for a health handler so far, this is actually going really well, right? We have most of the functionality that we're going to want to have for handling our health. There is one last thing we need to do, and that is to make sure that our health never goes above the maximum health and never drops below zero. So we're going to create one final function for this. At the very bottom of the script here, we're going to write a new function. Here, let me make some space. There we go. We'll go create a new function. And this will just be for handle underscore health. Be a void return type, and it won't take any parameters. And we can do some really simple checks here. We could technically, we can do clamp i. And then what we can do here is we can pass in a value and then the min and max. So we want to clamp the current health to zero and max health. What this will do here is literally just use, it will basically be a integer clamp, right? It clamps it between zero and the maximum. It cannot go below zero or above the maximum health. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing this is to do two if statements. So to write this out, we can go if current health is greater than the max health, we want to make sure that the current health is equal to the max health. So that's the, you know, over cap. We make sure it doesn't go above something. Now we reverse that. Let's go if current health is less than zero, because that's our minimum amount, current health is equal to zero. Now, what else do we want to do if the current health equals or equals zero? Well, when something equals zero, or when a health bar hits zero in any video game, the thing tends to get destroyed, right? So we're going to write a little comment here. So we're going to use the little hash sign or the pound sign here. We're going to write test destruction. I'm going to write a to do in front of this because to do's are very easy to find in Godot with certain filtering. So we'll be able to jump back to this when we need to. And then just below that comment, I'm going to do owner dot q free so what this function here or this little functionality here does is if the current health hits zero destroy the owner right remove the owner delete the owner the owner no longer exists which means the health handler no longer exists which means yeah we've well destroyed it we've get rid of it and now outside of this if statement i'm just going to do a very quick print here i'm going to print out the health value like so and i use a plus sign and just do the current health like that that means anytime this function gets called uh, i need to use str here for string conversion forgetting about that anytime handle health gets called it's going to print out this statement and tell us how much health the thing has remaining so new question we have our maxes set and our minimum set but we have other things like other setters and getters here modifying that or setters and applications of things modifying that. So what we're going to want to do very quickly is in the apply damage functionality that we have here, we're going to want to call handle health and apply healing. We are going to want to call handle health. What this is going to do is it will run this. And if this value takes the health below zero, it will then run handle health easily and it will go through and it will go, okay, this doesn't, you know, if it's below zero, this isn't true. So 
this means this is, which means we need to set it to zero and then Q3. There's a little order of operations thing that's just a pretty good thing to keep in mind. And that is the entirety of our health handler handled. Now we don't get to see the benefits of this just yet. We're going to have to do some, you know, the other two H's, the hitboxes and the hurt boxes, before we can uh, start seeing this actually in action. But I hope this has been kind of really easy to understand before we move on, because you know, handling health is very relatively simple. It's just, hey, here's a value, here's another value, here are some getter setters, uh, some minuses, some pluses, and then just something to make sure the health doesn't go below, a uh, below or above a certain value. And with that kind of set, what we can do now is go and move into the hitbox and hurtbox handler. So let's go do that. If we hit the plus sign and we go and create a new scene, we're actually going to be creating a scene of other node. This will be of type collision, or collision shape, change type, area 2D, there we go. This will be of type area 2D, and we are going to name this first one the hitbox handler, like so. And then we're going to hit control S and save, and because this is a handler, it will go in the handlers folder. Now we are going to hit the 2D scene, uh, we are going to hit control a or command a and we are going to give this its collision shape but what we're not going to do is actually give the collision shape 2d an actual shape yet we will be doing that in other scripts or other scenes that actually require the hitboxes so what we want to do is go to the hitbox handler create, uh, create a new script hit create hit Control s or command s and save now we can start working on the hitbox. Now, designing a hitbox and hurtbox can be a little bit confusing because you actually have to design to like the, uh, both of them at the same time to get them to function correctly. So that's kind of what we're going to do here. We'll kind of get the base of this done and then we'll go and move on to the hurt box. So let's remove the func or the ready and the process functions. Let's go and give this a class underscore name of hitbox handler. And now we're going to want to do it's really just two functions. The first one is going to be for setting the damage, right? Because we're going to want to like have damage on our hitbox. Now I haven't completely explained the differences between hitboxes and hurtboxes. So with our hitbox uh, named hitbox handler as a class name, let's go into the quick differences between a hitbox and a hurtbox. A hitbox is something that contains a damage amount and will make contact with a hurt box. A hurt box is a thing that will receive that damage and then basically run a calculation or run a function based off of the damage that it receives. So keep that in mind, hitboxes do damage whereas hurt boxes receive damage. So with that in mind, hitboxes do damage, right? So that means this hitbox is going to need a variable for the damage underscore amount or damage value. So let's typecast that as an int and set that equal to one for now. So we know that it has a base damage of one. Now, because if we remember correctly, when we create our projectiles, projectiles are something that will, you know, have a hitbox because they do damage. We remember that there is a resource connected to our projectiles. Let's go and look at the player primary resource here. So the player primary laser in our resources folder, we have a projectile damage here and I have this set to zero I'm going to change this to three so for now this isn't being used anywhere because we haven't had a place to set damage until now which means we want a function to set the damage right we want to set a function again so let's go func set underscore damage uh, we're going to want a parameter for new damage which is going to be of type integer and we're going to want a void return type and all we want to do here in the hitbox handler is just go damage amount is equal to the new damage. So now, anytime we, you know, want to use this damage, we just need to call this functionality through the projectile and, you know, apply the damage value. I will show you how to do that in a second. The final thing that we need to do for the hitbox, and this is really cool, the hitbox setup is really, really, really simple compared to the hurtbox. For the hitbox, all we want to do now is click on the area 2D root of this, go to node, signals, and then area entered. And then you'll see here that 
we double click that and it will go and create a function for us for on area entered. This is a built in signal for area 2Ds. It basically checks if another area is intersecting with the current area. And if it is, it will tell us what the area is and it will give us all of the data around that area. So we can now do certain checks, right? We can now check if the area is something, if it has something, if it does something. And this, however, is where we need to start creating the HUD box. For the check that we want to do, we need to have the HUD box defined. So this can know what the HUD box is. So let's go do that real quick. We're going to go and click the plus sign, other node, and then an area 2D again. We're going to, once again, give it a collision shape with command A or control A. And we won't actually need to give it a shape once again. So we're going to rename this to the hurt box handler, like so. And then we're going to hit control S and save, save it under the handlers like we did before and go and give it a new script. So for this script, all I want to do to start is grab the class underscore name and give it the class name of hurt box handler then hit control s or command s and save because we have done this we can now do a really really quick and simple checks inside of our hitbox handler on area entered we can go if area is hurtbox handler what this is going to do is it's going to check the script attached to the hurtbox or basically attached you know check the receiving area script and see if it is this. This is a hurtbox handler. Okay, we now know that that's what it's gonna check for. And it now knows that it's a hurtbox handler. Well, if it is, what do we want it to do? For now, we can write pass, but that is why we need the hurtbox handler defined first. Uh, with that defined, or with that you know, little check set up, let's go back into the hurtbox handler and start kind of designing that before we you know, come back to the hitbox and finish it off. What are we going to want for the Hurtbox handler? Well, the first thing a Hurtbox handler needs to do, of course, is actually handle the damage, right? It needs to receive that damage and it needs to do something with that damage. So let's write a new function. We'll go func handle underscore damage. It's going to need to take damage. So it needs a value of damage value or it needs a parameter of damage value like so. And it will be a void return type because we don't want to, uh, to return anything. I'll write pass for now. So we now have a function for hand handler, handle damage, handle. There we go. So we have a function now for handle damage, which takes a value in. That means we can start modifying stuff and doing things, right? But on the flip side of this, the hurtbox handle doesn't have anything to actually modify yet, does it? It doesn't have the ability to modify the health or affect the health in any way just by taking this value. So what we need to do now is something that I love doing. It is a exported variable for a custom created script or a custom created node. So in this case, we're going to want to give this access to the health handler. Now to do that, we can write at export, call this the health underscore handler. Oh, wait, make sure to write var, <laughs> export var health handler of type health handler equal to Null. Now what this will allow us to do is, as you see here, allow us to assign a health handler so this can actually start modifying the chosen health handler or calling functions on the health handler. Like, let's try this, let's go health handler dot apply damage. That is the function that we actually defined in our health handler right here, apply damage. So we now have access to this inside of the other script or inside of the hurt box. So let's do that. Let's go apply damage, passing through the damage value. Okay, so we've now, you know, passed through the damage value. The health handler has now taken over, is now received a health value or a damage value into its apply damage function, which means we're now doing current health minus equals damage value. And we are removing that damage from the health. Great, we now have a semi-functioning health system. The next thing we want to do here is actually modify the collision shapes hitbox, right? We want to make sure that, especially you know, for the player, we don't want the player to get hit 
15 times in one frame and take 15 times you know damage we want them to take one set of damage and then be invulnerable for a set amount of time now i want that to be happening on anything that can take damage because it will add a little bit more uh it adds a little bit of difficulty to the game so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to come to the top of our script here grab the collision shape attached to our hurt box and pull it in then use control or command before we drop and then drop to create the collision shape typecast as a collision shape 2d and now under the handle damage here we can go and set the disabled function so if we come down to here you see this little uh, in the inspector here we have the property for disabled we need to go and set this to on so it will disable the collision shape for a set amount of time so let's just go ahead and disable that first right let's call the collision shape 2d that we've just got on ready variable for and then let's set that to dot disabled and then set that equal to true so that's going to toggle this little box on now before we go a little bit further with this i want to let you know that this although is the correct way of doing it in a lot of instances for this it will actually start to throw a few errors what this is going to do is basically not be able to toggle fast enough because it kind of just won't be able to keep up and the engine will actually give you a really really nice warning about this it will tell you that you should use the call or set deferred method to actually change the uh, hitbox toggle and to do that and we'll do that now we'll go collision shape 2d dot set underscore deferred now we need to pass through the string name of the property so we know up here if we hover over disabled the string name is disabled and then we need to pass through the var variant or value and we want that to be set to true so that won't throw us any errors anymore that's great now the final thing we want to do right is well if we're disabling this we're gonna want some way to re-enable it after a certain period of time and that is where godot has a really really neat node if we go to the herbox handler here and click on the root, we use command shift, oh sorry, command A or control A, type in timer, we will get the timer node. The timer node is, you know, it's, well, as it says, it's a timer, it will time things for us. I'm going to rename this to the invuln timer for invulnerability timer. Then I'm going to do a really quick drag, control or command and drop like so. So we now have access to the timer as a timer. And this gives us something to actually, you know, start timing how long we want our collision shape 2D to be disabled for. So what we can do after we've disabled it is grab the invuln timer, not inverse lerp, invuln. I have spelt that wrong. We will fix that in a second. I will show you a really fun, cool, easy, quick way of doing it. So we'll grab the invuln timer, use dot start, and that's it. That's all we need to do is start it. Now, to fix this little typo issue I have here, and sometimes you'll end up doing a typo for like, a, you know, 30, 40, 50 lines, and that's a lot to have to rename all in one. Uh, what we're going to do is very quickly come up to here. We're going to rename this in the scene tree to in, in von, to have in von. There we go. We're going to rename it here as well to have in von. And then right here on the on ready, what we can do is use control or command D D. And what that's going to do is start selecting every instance of that specific wording or that specific variable. Now I can go to the beginning and then one letter in press N and it renames all instances for us. Very useful, very time saving. So we now have the invulnerability timer starting. Well, when timers start, when they finish at least that they actually have a uh, when timers finish they have a special signal they fire now, if you remember how to find signals cool if not go to node go to signals and here's the special signal timeout so when the timer hits zero it will emit this signal that's really good for us because that means we can double click on this we can connect it to the hurtbox handler's primary script and then in here when that timer times out we want to do something specific right we want to re-enable the collision shape so we can go and call the collision shape again use dot set underscore deferred 
I can spell deferred. There we go. Once again, grab the disabled property and then set that to false. So we are now retoggling and resetting our hitboxes correctly. There's one last thing I want to actually add to this script before we start doing anything with it. And that is going to be a way of changing the timer to be kind of customizable to each individual entity that has one. Uh, that's going to be really simple. It's just going to be the export variable uh, for the in in vom underscore time. So this is going to be a little bit different to the timer. This is going to be the specific time. So it's going to be an integer. We'll set that equal to one second. Actually, no. We'll make this a float instead, and it will be 1.0 as its value. Now, the last cool thing you can do with timers here is when you use the start functionality in these parentheses you can actually pass through the time you want it to have when you start the timer so if i just put in the invuln time here we will now have a timer that will start for one second a uh, very quick thing we should do and make sure we do with the invuln timer is we click on it go to the inspector and then go to this little tick box here for one shot if true, the timer will stop when reaching zero. If false, it will restart. But we don't want the timer frequently resetting, do we? We want to just set it to on or set the timer to one shot. That way, when it does its thing, it does its thing once and then it can just be toggled again when we need it to, not randomly, repeatedly all the time. Let's hit Control S and save. And we can now move back to our hitbox handler because we finally get the chance to finish off the on area entered here. So if we remember correctly, we were going if area is of type herbox handler. Okay, so we now know it is a herbox handler. We can now grab the area dot and we can use like, I don't know, the handle damage function like so. So, you know, we're actually handling the damage and then we just pass through the damage amount. What that's going to do is now go into our herbox handler here. It's going to call the handle damage function passing through its damage specifically it's going to run all of these things and then that's it now this is a semi-coupled way of doing this and there are different ways of doing this and we will probably get to those in the future but for now this will work really well for us there's one last thing i want to do to the hitbox handler at the very top here just below our damage amount i'm going to create a new signal and this is just going to be for the projectile underscore hit and after we have applied or handled our damage here, I want to call that projectile emit signal and use dot emit. So that what this is actually going to do here is after it you know handles the damage or sends this off or calls this function, it's then going to emit a signal that something can listen to and it will start kind of modifying things and uh, yeah, we'll be able to do something with that basically, which is really cool. So we only really have two more things to actually kind of mess with here. We need a way of setting our damage, which we've got here, right? We've got a set damage functionality. So we need, a, well, we need something that actually can attach to the hitbox to take, you know, or something that the hitbox can attach to, to start taking advantage of these functions and actually start being a damage dealer. I think the best thing to start with, of course, is of course our projectiles. So what we're going to do is go into our scenes folder, go down into projectiles, down into the base entity or base projectile entity .tscn. So we can open up the basic bullet we have here, or basic projectile. And we're going to go and use command shift A, or control shift A. And we are going to give this a hitbox handler. As I said before, we now need to actually make sure to give this a collision shape to make sure, you know, this will collide with things. So let's go do that, let's go. Uh, right click on the hitbox handler, go down to editable children so we can modify the collision shape here and then change this to a circle shape for now. I'm going to increase the size of that just a little bit just so, you know, th this isn't a perfect hitbox for this but it will do quite well for what we wanted to do. So we now have our hitbox handler. What we can do on top of this is go back into the base projectile entity we can give it a reference to the hitbox handler. We're going to do this through or as an exported reference. So we'll go export var hitbox underscore handler. And we'll set that of type hitbox handler and set it equal to null. Use control S and save. Click on the base projectile entity. Assign our new hitbox handler like so. 
we can now start doing something with this we are going to need to do two things the very first thing is actually add a set damage functionality into our projectile because we have set speed direction texture but we don't have a damage function so just above speed here i'm going to create a new function for set underscore damage it's going to take a new underscore damage as a parameter and that's going to be of type int and it will return void or return nothing and then we're going to go and access this hitbox handler that we have just created so hitbox handler then use dot set damage and we're going to pass in that new damage function here what that allows us to do is when we are creating these projectiles from our factory we can now call this functionality to set the damage of the new projectile which is perfect for us the last thing i want to do here is if we go to the hitbox handler and we go over to the node now if you remember correctly we had a bunch of signals here like we do for on area entered exited shape but we now have this new one projectile hit if you remember correctly that is the one that we just created that is the custom signal that we created we are going to double click on that and connect it to the base projectile entity inside of here we can now do something when that projectile actually hits something which is really cool that's why i like you know custom signals like this because it allows us to know when certain things are happening so when that project or that projectile collides with something the actual entity itself will know that it's collided with something and we can do something in this case i want to just q free the projectile i want to delete the projectile entirely that way we know that something's actually happening so i'm going to hit Control s and save and we can finally go back to the one thing that we haven't touched yet, and that is our projectile factory. That's the last thing, like last scene that we need to modify. So let's go under Managers folder, grab the projectile factory.gd, and scroll down to where we're creating like the new projectile and adding things. Just below set direction, we can go new underscore projectile dot set underscore damage, and we can pass in the projectile resource dot projectile damage now i can hit Control s and save and that's it all we actually have to do now is just set up the actual physical side of the projectiles we need to set up their collision layers and you know add them to things right so i think a really good thing to test this on to start will be the asteroids so let's go into our scenes folder asteroids and grab the large asteroid dot tscn so we created a health handler which the asteroid is of course going to need so let's use Control shift a or command shift a we'll add the health handler to that let's go to the inspector we'll set its health to you know we'll leave its health to 10 for now that'll be fine let's also add a so command shift a or Control shift a we're going to add a hurt box handler the hurt box is of course the thing that's going to take in the damage so we're going to grab the health handler or assign the health handler inside of the hurt box handler like so we set the invon time down to 1. Point, well, we'll go 0 0.1. There we go. Hit Control S and save. And finally, we need to go back to the base projectile entity. Make sure we've got that set up. We have. I forgot to add a collision shape, of course, to the hurt box handler. So let's go and do that. Let's add a circular collision shape to that. Just make it just a little bit bigger so it's easier to shoot. Hit Control S and save. And we now have everything mostly set now there is going to be a slight issue that we're going to run into and this isn't something that's kind of easily shown so what i'm going to do is kind of just go over it i guess if you click on the hurt box handler here inside you'll see this collision layer collision mask these are very 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 important now if you go and change them inside of the hurt box and hitbox layer this will be set to every single one of them we want to set this specifically for the hitboxes and hurtboxes that need to connect to certain things so what we're going to do first is we'll go to project and this make our lives easier go to project project settings in the filter settings we're going to type the word layer and then under layer names here we can go to 2d physics we get these layers layer 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 as you see here 1 through 8 so this is the collision layers that we need to mess around with and this is just a way of naming them i'm going to name the first one world the second one player the third one enemy 
and the fourth one collectible i don't know if we'll have collectibles but i don't know it's just good idea to just have one for that layer just in case we want to use it in the future so to explain to you layers and masks which is inside of the collision down here so we've got these renamed right we've renamed these to all of these different names which is really useful the layer is where the object will exist on as I says here, the physics layer is in, uh, this is the collision object that it is in. Collision objects can exist in one or more of 32 different layers. Object A can detect a contact with object B only if object B is in any of the layers that object A scans. So what we are on is the layer and what we are scanning for is the mask, right? So right now it is on the world layer and it's scanning for the world mask. So how do we want to do this, right? Well, we don't want them on the world layer. We're going to want the large asteroid scanning for anything on the player layer. And we're going to want the base projectile entity here. So the thing that's actually doing the hunting, uh, the hitbox handler, we want that to be scanning for anything on the enemy layer, but existing on the player layer. So let's go and do that and give it a little test and fire into it. And as you can see, I completely forgot to add this to the enemy layer here. So let's go and add that to the enemy layer, click play and actually go and test this. Uh, as you can see, we are now breaking boulders and you can see their health getting printed down and the invuln time of 0.01 is not protecting them nearly enough. So let's go and bump that up to just one. Now let's go and fire a laser into a rock or a couple of them. And you can see some of them are now passing through the rock and it's not just getting destroyed immediately. Which is really good that means our hitboxes and hurtboxes are working as you can also see down in the debugger here in the output we can see the health values of the boulder that we are shooting at or the asteroid we are shooting at sorry Let's try that again so it's now down to seven health four one and it's gone uh this is really really cool system i love this because it means we can go to the player primary laser we can go change the projectile damage to i don't know let's do eight do eight click play fire the button and as you can see the health goes down to two immediately which now means it's dying in two shots uh, let's go change that back down to two as a starting number i like two two is a nice number but yes, that pretty much handles all of the changes that we need to do for the factory and the actual hitboxing and hurtboxing i hope this has been a uh, relatively easy to understand video i do apologize i apologize if i've been a bit everywhere it's been a bit of a chaotic day with all of the coding but uh, in the next video, we'll be handling some basic UI element stuff to try and like start, you know, looking into scoring and how that functions. And we'll also be looking into like player health and how the, we're going to be handling the ship and its health and scoring and stuff. But yes, thank you for watching. I hope you've had a good day and a great game dev journey, and I will see you in the next video.